Hey YouTube, going to do a quick project overview of this project that probably is about a year too late. I decided to build this a couple days ago as a result of coworkers having conversations near my desk while I'm trying to run uh, teleconference calls with uh, other stakeholders for projects at work. Now, ideally, coworkers wouldn't have those conversations and ideally you'd have a meeting in a room, but with the pandemic, it's more risk than worth it, especially for um, certain mission critical staff. Regardless of which, um, I designed this as a fully self-contained unit. In an ideal world, you would IoT or, you know, interconnect this thing so it's somehow automated. If you're in a meeting in Outlook, it automatically switches your setting and everyone's happy. But lots of companies don't like that. They don't like um, unfamiliar systems that aren't under their control connected to their systems. And it's reasonable either way. Uh, as a self, fully self-contained system, um, there's, uh, I guess, security by obscurity built into this. It's not fully secure in the sense that I can't just wave an RFID card to unlock it. Um, I've hidden a read switch in here, magnetic sensor to allow me to lock and unlock it, and the finite state machine running on the little Arduino in here uh, saves the states to the EEPROM, so even if you power cycle it, you won't be able to change the state unless um, you know exactly what to do. So, in terms of the physical build, pretty straightforward. 3D printed bracket with um, heat set inserts. This slips over the cubicle wall with a um, with a little bit of a friction fit. There's a one degree draft on here just to give it a little bit of a press fit. Um, a little bracket here. Cat5 cable for power and data. Half inch schedule, 40 PVC. And uh, on the actual top assembly, you've got 48 LEDs, 12 strips of four LEDs a piece. WS2812, so fully RGB and addressable. Uh, in terms of the legend sign, I'm going to put color stickers or something here, but it's just a friction fit coroplast sign so that in the future I could pull this out and uh, relabel it with anything that I want. Uh, because eventually the pandemic's going to be over and eventually I may not need this sign at my desk. Regardless of which, how does it actually work? So there's a hard and a soft lock, as I've called it in the code. The soft lock is just to prevent casual people from screwing around with it. You just have to press two buttons and then you select which one you want. So I can select the color and just quickly set the color to whatever I want. Um, I, I chose blue because it seems to carry the best um, distance wise and visibility wise. It gets people's attention to say, hey, I'm in a meeting. Please don't walk up to me and just start talking as if I'm going to pay attention to you. I've clearly got headphones on. I'm clearly talking to other people. You're just going to have to wait. Can you tell I'm bothered by this? Anyways, um, the soft lock really is just a, you know, a quick measure of preventing people from interfering with it. But what if I'm walking away for the rest of the day, right? What if I'm working from home for a couple days um, with a little Hall Effect, not Hall Effect, read sensor switch in here. I can wave a magnet by here and then now it's locked and you can't change a setting. Even if you power cycle it, it comes back to its original state because you're saving the state machine uh, setting in the EEPROM. The microcontroller should be good for probably tens to hundreds of thousands of writes. And how many times am I going to power cycle this? I think for the lifetime of this project, I'll never have an issue. And honestly, I'm only saving in one memory address. So if at all I ever have to, uh, you know, deal with a worn out memory cell in, in the microcontroller, I just change the address from zero to one and I've extended the lifetime. What to do? Um, either way, the software as well in here has a hidden debug mode and this is mainly for future applications where I change out this cat5 cable for a much much longer run to say if I wanted to put this remotely um, when it powers up and detects the read switch is closed it just does um, fast LED the fast LED library fill underscore rainbow function and it just uh, shifts uh, data down the cat5 cable as fast as possible 
just to give it a stress test. If this cable has a bad connection or you know there's an issue with the cable, this quick debug mode would help me figure out if it's an intermittent connection issue. You know, say if you just start pulling this connection out and giving it an intermittent con connection, you'd start uh, jiggling the cable and trying to find out if there was a you know bad conductor in here or something. Anyways, you can just quickly exit out of that debug mode and then you're into your normal program. Oh, right, and it locks itself on power up, so, you know, it's pretty foolproof and pretty simple. Um, I think at this point I'm just going to go into the internal construction really quickly and then call it a day. This is just a really quick project video. This isn't a build log or anything like that. I literally banged this out in a day and a half, so let's take a look inside. All right, so let's take a quick dive inside. Um, I've got the unit powered up. It's low voltage DC, so no one's really going to care. Case was designed in uh, Fusion 360 to really just fit the form factor that I wanted it to. I would have liked to give it a, a slanted profile, but quick and imperfect is better than perfect and not complete. So just a couple of uh, countersunk screws couple push buttons and the inside does look like a bit of a rat's nest but it works. Uh, quick case drawn up with some support ribs just to increase its rigidity. Heat set inserts for the uh, case lid screws as well as for the screws holding down the Arduino. This is just one of those uh, cheap three dollar Arduino knockoff boards from AliExpress. Um, word of caution they use CH340 chips instead of the FTDI chips so you'll need to go through some hoops to install the drivers and sometimes you can get uh, dud chips that don't work so all they do you plug it in you can't actually get a serial port and the cheap the chip just heats up um, it's three dollars so your mileage may vary um, they work just fine they still have a, a legitimate at mega 320p chip on there so it's plenty of space for most of your uh, code in this little blue heat shrink assembly I have a small switch mode um, buck converter. These are super cheap, you can get them from uh, AliExpress, Amazon, etc. for you know three, four bucks a pop maybe. And they're a fully integrated circuit, you just solder on a couple wires for your input and output voltages and some of them give you the facility to adjust the voltage as well. Uh, they take a very wide input range because they're meant to handle like RC batteries for planes, helicopters, and cars. So you can take anywhere from say a two two S lithium battery up to say a six or seven S lithium battery. Either way, power comes in the socket, goes to the switch, goes to the switch mode, and then um, through this rat's nest of wiring, which I'm intentionally leaving long in case I want to add anything or um, salvage components. Um, I can go in after the fact and cut stuff out. Um, other than that, I've got a little wiring harness for the buttons. I'm using pull-up resistors on the Arduino, so I don't actually need anything other than a ground line and the five signal lines for the buttons. If I wanted more buttons, I could use an I2C I.O. expander, but again, I wanted this super fast and I didn't need lots of options. I don't want to overcomplicate this really it's just five settings and I'm done. Um, down in the bottom here is the small read switch. I had this handy from a, uh, a sensor kit that I got gifted to me. Um, so they had a bunch of different sensors including just this read switch. So just signal and ground, contact closure, does the job just fine. I don't need anything special. I don't even really need to hold it down. Um, because once this thing's installed, it's good forever. Unless there's an earthquake, which in uh, the Ontario area is very rare, so I really don't need to worry about that shifting around. I've got three holes in the back that mount to the bracket, but uh, I have the option of mounting it somewhere else if I want. And this thing. This is just a ready-made available um, Cat5 uh, extension jack. For lack of a better term, it comes for maybe five to ten dollars on AliExpress. You get a uh, shielded Cat5 with a cable and um, you, 
get a male on one end, a female on the other, but the female is designed to be panel mounted. So you could have a computer inside an enclosure, you plug this into the computer, and you mount that on the panel with the two M3 screws. It provides a pretty durable mount. Um, there's a bit of flexure because the wall uh, is a little bit not too rigid. Um, my fault, I should have put a fillet in the bottom of the case, but I didn't, so, you know, shame on me. Either way, um, the wires that come out aren't twisted pair, unfortunately, so I wouldn't even call it necessarily Cat5. It would be more like, um, I don't know, is it Cat4? Uh, either way, I wouldn't trust these for high data rate, but they're such a short cable, they're only a few inches long, that you can get away with it. And in this application, it's not even really high speed. It's maybe kilobits per second at most when you're doing uh, one wire serial data down the uh, WS2812s. Either way, this was designed super quick and built in two days on my spare time. So this thing's done and it's gonna go uh, at my desk at work. So other than that, let's uh, talk about a bit more on the development side. So, now that we've taken a look inside, I guess a few other notes about the uh, development and kind of quick prototyping of this. AliExpress is a great resource if you're willing to plan ahead so that you can pre-stock your bins, if you can afford it, uh, both in terms of money and space, with certain items. One of those items are these uh, header shields. They cost a dollar or two. And all they do is they break out all of these connections into headers. Each of the digital and analog pins are broken out into a three pin ground voltage signal um, header. So you can quickly plug in a, um, say just a switch. With the internal pull up resistor turned on, you only need two wires. You don't need any resistors. You don't need to wire anything else up. You just literally put two wires on. Um, if you needed to wire up, say, just a quick prototype connector for the Cat5 cable, just a 3-pin connection and, you know, choose the uh, I.O. pin that you want to connect to. You can break out the I2C, your serial com, um, as well as, I don't know what U or F means, but they've also broken out pins for an SD card uh, connection if you so want, and then they've got... Um, two wireless connection headings for an APC 22, uh, sorry, two, 220, APC 220, or a Bluetooth module. I, I'm not familiar with those, but that's fine. And uh, some good old-fashioned screw terminals for 5 volt and ground. For a buck or two, this is a great prototyping aid because it just means you can quickly connect stuff up with DuPont cables, anything else, and you're off to the races. When you actually want to integrate, you can start soldering things down, etc and you're not limited. Um, next thing to think about is in terms of power. The, um, the small little switch mode buck converter, you might find them on AliExpress under battery eliminator circuit, BEC, uh, from the um, radio control world. It's quite common. Um, you can get these for a dollar or two, and as long as you only need one or two, maybe three amps, you can get these things provided a wide input voltage range and yet, relatively speaking, efficient conversion, 80% maybe, 90 if you're lucky. Uh, you'll still get some heat dissipation, but they're super cheap, super easy, four leads, and if you need very low ripple voltage, um, you might want to add an inductor and capacitor to that just to smooth things out, but for... Um, digital stuff like this, it doesn't matter too much. It's not super mission critical. If you're doing like fine analog sensing with op amps and you're trying to sense micro amps from a photo sensor for something like microfluidics, you know, that's when you'd want to smooth out the voltage and maybe go full linear and go the extra, you know, mile. In this case, it really didn't matter, so I just quickly banged in a power supply and uh, I can take any, any, um, uh, wall wart with a uh, barrel plug and uh, provide power for this. Um, stocking buttons, great thing. Stocking rocker switches, that's a great thing as well. 
Um, everything was from the bins that I had, and I just improvised based on what I wanted. Uh, in terms of the footprint of the enclosure, um, honestly, I just improvised. The idea is that it mounts onto this bracket, and it's going to be just constantly available for uh, for myself to signal my status to coworkers. So I think that's about it. If you like this video, like, subscribe, comment, leave a message down in the comments what your solutions for this have been. I've seen coworkers that just tape up a big piece of paper that says on call. Um, I'd rather build something that looks a little nicer, but that's my personal preference. Otherwise, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can tell the algorithm that you want to see more content like this. Uh, until next time, stay safe. Peace out.